This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a Mila tumble dryer that is not heating. We're going to be changing out the element. It's pretty easy to do. Just got to follow the directions. I think this might be the only English version of this instruction. Usually it's in German. So this is on the Mila T1515 Novatronic. And first thing I'm going to do is take a five millimeter Allen wrench and I'm going to loosen up the two screws that are holding this plate on. This is the rear bearing plate. So five millimeter there and five millimeter there. And one of these holes is directly at nine o'clock and one is directly at three o'clock. And you want to look for these bigger holes. See, there's a lot of holes on this thing, but they're the bigger holes. And you want to turn the drum until you line them up at nine o'clock and three o'clock. Then you want to loosen the screws by turning about 10 times, but the screws won't come out. They're just going to loosen up. Once they're both loose, that's going to loosen up the rear bearing, allowing you to take this plate off. Before pulling the plate off, though, we do have to remove uh, six of these peripheral screws here. These are also five millimeter Allen. So we're going to zip these all off. And once those are off and you have those two central screws off, you'll be able to get this plate out of there. And that's going to expose the heating element and then it's pretty easy to get out. Before you replace the heating element, if it's just not heating well, double check that you have 220 volts coming in. There's two breakers for your dryer. Make sure they're Make sure they're in the full on position. It might be good to turn both breakers all the way off and then turn them all the way back on. That actually might cure the heating problem and you won't have to put a new element in. But to do the elements actually pretty easy. It should just take you about half an hour. So now that you have all the perimeter screws out, the two screws in the middle, you can grab that whole assembly and pull it towards you. You may need to tug a little bit it also can help to push up on the drum while you pull it towards you. And once you get that out of the way, you don't have to remove it. You can just kind of set it down inside the drum. And now we're going to be removing a plate behind it by removing a total of four 10 millimeter bolts. And there's one up there at about one o'clock. There's one down at seven o'clock. And then there's two off at the sides. And this plate is the part that's holding on to the rear bearing and also uh, helps to hold in the heating element. So we have to make sure we remove it. Pretty easy to do. Okay, we can pull that plate out. Be a good time to clean up any lint or dirt and dust that you see in there. that plate out and now we can remove the connector that's coming in at the right side at about uh, four o'clock. We're going to grab a pair of pliers and pull that connector out to your right to make it release. And then the female side of that that it was plugged into has to be removed too. And you do that by using a pair of pliers to pinch in on the sides and you push it in to your left toward the middle of the dryer. And that's going to make it disconnect. And now you can actually pull the old element out of the dryer. So we just pulled that plug free of where it was. And then you can take a look at the two elements, the brand new one and the old one. And you're going to take off the two electrical components on top. One is a thermostat, one is a high limit. And take a picture of it first so you know how the wires go on to these two. And then you're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove those two 
and then tighten them down to the new element and make sure you get the wires exactly how they came off. Here's a link to the uh, new element, but it's probably best to call Mila USA, give them your model number and have them send you one because these are pretty hard to find online. So once we have that all assembled, we're going to go ahead and slide the new element into the same slide it came out of. Push it all the way down as far as it will go. And once you get it down in there, you can try to line up the holes in the element at the top that will line up with the holes in the housing that it goes into. Should already be pretty much lined up, but you can just make sure that those holes are at the same level. Now we're going to push the female side of that jack back through the right side at about 4, 4.30. Push it all the way in until it clicks. And then we'll take the male side of it, the one that brings power, We'll push that all the way in as far as it'll go until it's fully locked in. Then we can go ahead and add that plate back into position. Line up the holes and then we're going to add those four 10 millimeter bolts back in. So we'll go ahead and tighten those four 10 millimeter bolts down nice and tight and then we can install that big plate that we took out originally, we have to make sure that there is a ridge in the bottom of that plastic gray plate and that has to line up with a, a line in the hole that it goes into. So make sure that's pointing down. Here's that little ridge. So we're kind of, have, this is kind of upside down at this point. We've got to flip it around so this ridge points down to six o'clock. And then we can go ahead and slide it in. And then once it's in, we can go ahead and tighten those five millimeter Allen head screws. And they never came out, they were just loosened, but they stayed in the same position. To do that, you gotta make sure that they're exactly at nine o'clock position and three o'clock position. And then you can go ahead and get them tight. And those are the ones that are locking the rear bearing into position. So you got to get those nice and snug. And that is the completed assembly, except we have to put in those peripheral screws that go around. Those are also five millimeter and just put them in one at a time and also get those nice and tight. I'm just using the same kind of a five millimeter Allen wrench to zip those in. Here's some close up pictures of when I took out the wires for the thermostat and for the high limit. This may help you if, if you didn't get a chance to take a picture. This one's a bit blurry, but it gives you a rough idea of where those wires go. And this should get your dryer heating strong again. These are designed to last maybe 20 years, but yours could be 25, 30 years old. It might be time for a new one. There's a close-up picture of how those wires are set up. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.